Live from Studio 3B, it's the Pinky and the Brain Show. The Pinky and the Brain, yeah, Pinky and the Brain. They started up a podcast so Jeremy can complain. They talk about their life, news, sports, and Twitter fights. Brain, it's Kinky. The Pinky and the Brain, 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 Brain. What's up, podcasters? Your favorite drunk bastards are back. Hello, hello. Ron, lucky number seven. Not, lucky uh, number seven. <laughs> Brandon, you sexy son of a bitch. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I wore a tank top just for you. Oh, I, you know, I love that. I'm going to come rub your nipples here in a second. <laughs> Travis, how are you doing? Doing really good. Good. Well, we've got an amazing jam-packed show for you this week. We're going to make up for the turd we left last week, <laughs> <laughs> where we had to, you know, let's pull the curtain back for a second. We had to splice and edit, you know, Frankenstein an episode for you guys. Producer yeah. Travis was out of town. But we still wanted to come up with some content, so we put it out. But now we're back. We're in studio, and son of a bitch, does it feel so good. It's so good. We're back in the groove, baby. All right. So I told you, jam-packed today. So we're going to recap the Bone Thugs and Harmony uh, concert. We have an interview coming up with Farzine Vasuyan. He is a uh, Chiefs. He writes about Chiefs. He does a podcast about MMA, and we're going to get into all kinds of crazy stuff with him. So that'll be fun. And last, you know, we'll do some news. Whatever. That's boring. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so first, let's recap this goddamn Bone concert. Because nothing makes me feel as good as going and listening to 90s rap with the strangers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes. that's basically what it is. It's a bunch of, like... 30 40 year old guys basically i mean there was uh, there was a few females there i guess but it's yeah. just mostly like 30 and 40 year old guys they were there with their boyfriends or husbands yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> uh yeah exactly yeah. um boom boom, boom singing boom. and dancing basically the whole time but it was like a good it's the first of the month it was like a good group of people like everyone was pretty friendly oh yeah yeah you know, it was uh, uh, twista was fantastic yep. I, oh yeah had a chance to go take a picture with him but i was more concerned with drinking so i i, I immediately regret that decision <laughs> no but and here's the thing though maybe Maybe I, I was drunk because I hadn't eaten all day That's and I just fact. went straight to drinking. <laughs> but do you? I, I felt like he only did maybe five songs. It, my, no, he, he did uh, maybe he was, like five or ten. Because I, I mean, was like, like ten songs. Like right? the ones. Okay, he did. He did kind of a lot of the like the kind of the R and B like uh, get it wet and stuff. Uh -huh. like, but I was wanting some of his hardcore more like he, he did, did that do first. He, the first one he did yeah. the. Uh, 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 what uh, adrenaline rush? Right. Yep. But I see, I was wanting to hear more like in that vein, and I yep. feel like he only did the other ones were like his more R R and B. I think this is slightly distorted uh, a remembrance from you because he was on stage a good forty five minutes. I'd say was it. Like he did, I see. I don't oh. know. No, not, I, I like because he did all the classics to start with. Yeah, and then he did like maybe adrenaline some rush, songs. get it wet. Those are the only two really that I specifically remember. Well, I mean. I was. I remember. I, I don't remember a lot, but I do remember <laughs> that uh, I was wishing that he played a lot more like late '90s, like the harder stuff. Yes. The know? hard, exactly. That's I, what, yeah, I, yeah. We can might agree. be wrong, but we can agree but on still, that. But still, yeah. but 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 the songs he did, he knocked out of the park. It was uh, great. It was. That's more of a preference. Now, you if know? you're a, a rap fan out there, wondering, wow, Twister, he raps really fast. How could he possibly do that live? He did it live, folks. He does it. He <laughs> fucking does it. I can't even imagine. It that. wasn't this stupid pre-produced shit where he's just you know lip syncing basically he did it live and it was fucking awesome or so. you've seen they'll, they'll have a hype man that does half the sentence mm -hmm. for him so that oh, they yeah. can get the other half or whatever yeah like yeah. that trash white guy that rapped first when we first got there yeah. uh will smith <laughs> <laughs> yeah so well uh, and he was actually pretty good i mean he was to, it was him that. and like his buddy with a laptop it's yeah. like me and jeremy when we're like <laughs> hey, 18 that's a, well, that's a lot of courage what to I'm get saying, oh it, that's, it definitely yeah. does that's what i told brandon that day which is Hey, he's got more balls than I do it's to true. come out here and perform this trash like it doesn't even matter. Uh -huh. so. And he was doing it. He was owning it. You know, yeah. yeah. So yeah. actually, go you, because anyone who's trying to chase down a dream, I do have respect for. So exactly. I did talk a little shit, but I do actually respect the hustle. Yeah. So go for it. Well, and shit, man. I bet at the end of the day, he's making pretty decent money if you're, right. if you're touring. You know? So we did have a couple of, we took the <laughs> digital recorder out with us. And recorded a couple of really silly <laughs> shenanigans. Um, Travis, why don't you hit us first with that Brandon one? 
Brandon, where are you going? I gotta go shit my fucking brains out. <laughs> well, and that's Brandon, poor Brandon, was not feeling well. And I'll let him finish the story, but basically, yeah. about halfway through the Bone concert, he, he had to go to, home. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. devastated. Tell us by a little the way. bit about that. So the Bone concert was on a Friday night. Wednesday night, I got drunk by myself. <laughs> Any good story <laughs> always starts about seventy-two hours in advance. <laughs> and I had, a, I had, I had, I got drunk at home, and I had a large tombstone pizza that I was going to cook for dinner. Oh, and Jesus! I Christ, even bought folks. extra, like I bought extra mozzarella even to put on, so it would be extra cheese. <laughs> Listen to this. This is a Herculean food eating <laughs> deal here. Like Kobayashi couldn't feel finish this shit go for it list off the shit you ate so so i i drink a bunch of tank sevens which for those that are unfamiliar it's it's like eight and a half percent booze so it's almost like drinking table wine yep. and i i knocked back a, a shit ton of those and i was just i don't even know what i was doing i think i was watching golden girls actually i think just fucking drink it with my ladies hold on yeah, I masturbate to the Golden Girls DVD sitting there. <laughs> yeah, Brandon really did say that. So, Unsolicited. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so anyways, I, I might have just got drunk with the girls. Uh, but <laughs> So I ate this entire large pizza, and I was not satisfied whatsoever. So I live downtown Kansas City, and unfortunately I discovered this place called Insomnia Cookies, and they deliver cookies and ice cream until 3 motherfucking a.m. Wow. So I got a six-pack of cookies. <laughs> And what they call a quart. Now, of ice are these cream. like normal, like half dollar size cookies, or are these like the s size of a small plate? Size They're cookies? like, <laughs> if you're familiar, I think what I would compare it to is Subway, about the size of a Subway cookie. Okay. You know, so it's a pretty good size. It's about the size of a coaster, like a CD but almost, yeah, but a little bit smaller, a little maybe. bit smaller between maybe a coaster and a CD, but um, thick. You know, CDs, I mean, they're, they're homemade. CDs for our younger listeners are these things. They <laughs> are circles, and you used to put them in your car, and then they would play music for you. <laughs> and for older people. We're not talking about the investment. <laughs> so I, uh, so yeah, so I slam these. So on top of the, the large pizza with the, the extra cheese, I fucking slam this whole court. I accidentally, I was drunk. I accidentally ordered mint chocolate chip, which I fucking hate. I still ate the fucking yeah, I'm not whole a, thing. <laughs> dude. It's such it's such a weird thing because like mint chocolate chip is so c close to cookies and cream, but cookies and cream true. ice cream is like light years better. It's true because I'm not a big fan of the mint chocolate. Yeah, chocolate, I mean mint uh, in general, you know. So anyway, so I don't know, you know, I'm I'm turning 37 this August. So I my sister actually had told me she's uh she's seven years older than me. So she's in her 40s, but she had told me that she's actually later in life seemed to develop IBS. And so I think I maybe have a little bit of that going on. So when I bombarded my hit it, <laughs> Brandon, where are you going? I gotta go shit my fucking brains out. Yeah. Continue. So so I uh. So anyway, so that happened Wednesday night. I woke up Thursday with like just the in the worst pain. I mean, it was like it was gas pains. Like it felt like my intestines were going to explode. It's like I, I would say, you know, like when you go to the doctor and they have that little pain scale and one is like a smiley face and 10 is like the excruciating. I, mean, I would put them on like an eight. I mean, it was bad. But you know what? I fucking love this podcast. I love my friends. So I wanted you to go. I wanted it. to go to this yeah. concert. And so I went and it was funny because I hadn't eaten all day. I was working. I got out of work late. As a matter of fact. Everybody else at the podcast was actually waiting outside yeah. of my apartment for me to get off work so we could set up True and do the story. podcast before we went. So I was even running that late. So I didn't have a chance to eat. And uh, so anyways, we're at, we're at the show. And it's at Crossroads, which is next to Grinders, and they had they they make this uh, really good like uh, New York style pizza, and they they've got like a little window where they do single serving. So uh, about halfway through the show, I was kind of hitting that wall. So Travis and Jeremy, of course, my two hombres, mm -hmm. uh, were like, "Hey, let's go get a slice of pizza." In our drunken state, nobody really thinking about the fact that dairy is what set my stomach off in the first place, and I'm now proceeding to, on top of a stomach full of alcohol, <laughs> eating a big piece of <laughs> cheesy, greasy pizza. And so we ate the pizza, and I immediately started feeling sick. And unfortunately, this was pretty much right before Bone Thugs went on, which was at like 11 yep, o'clock. That's exactly how so, I remember it. Yeah, like, so like, like, I didn't make it very long. Between sets, basically, you know... Twista came on, and then there was like a 20-minute break where there's no music or anything being played. Yeah. That's a right about the time that I would looked over at you, and you're like, Brandon is a very loud bastard, okay? Yeah. So Obnoxious, he's loud, like, jumping around. He's like kind of... <laughs> domesticated, I guess is the way to put it. Like he's very quiet and he's not looking at his best shape. And I'm like, dude, are you all right? Like, I'm like 
do you want to go get a shot? You want to go get a beer or anything? Yeah. And when Brandon says no to that question, I know something's up. I had the look of, imagine someone that just sharded themselves and doesn't <laughs> want anybody to know. <laughs> well, I can't imagine a situation when you shart yourself and you do want people to know. Like, <laughs> what true. situation would that look like? <laughs> <laughs> what would that kind of person look like? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I so. imagine Smiley from Austin's is the kind of type of guy that that would <laughs> do that. For oh, any man. for any listeners out there who obviously don't know who he is, imagine a pug but in human form. Oh my god, that is the best fucking he is. Oh my god, he's a human pug. He is. That's exactly what he looks like. And his head. I don't. I don't think the guy can wear ball caps. I don't think they make him. See, I thought I had a large big. head. Now I got to tell you a little story. I. Uh, when Elizabeth was first born, we had to go to like several doctor's appointments. Uh, mm -hmm. She had a brain condition, so we had to do a lot of uh, you know checkups and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, it was a brain-related deal. So, um, so a lot of what they did was like cognitive tests. Yeah, measure her head and stuff. They measured her head, and the doctor was like, "Wow, that's big." And so he, <laughs> for, wow, that's big. For, Thanks, so, Doc. <laughs> for a goof, he measured my head. He's like, this is the largest head I've ever seen in my life. It was like 16 inches or some crazy thing. He's like, I've never seen a head that big. <laughs> I'm just like, how, how the hell am I supposed to take that? Is, is that a compliment? Does that mean I've got like a superior large brain or what? Because it sounds like a, it sounds like a slight. It's true, <laughs> but whatever. So, but dude, I think it's your school. Because remember, I've seen you take a chain to the head I during have taken a fight. A chain to the head, that and is you a true story. and you did not go down. I it, was like the Terminator. I was you determined. Were. It just it, it just pissed you off. You took a fucking chain. Remember I went down. Head. Remember I went down like six or seven times in that fight. Uh -huh. like, I went down. He thought I was done. Nope. Uh -uh. I got back up, yeah. sort of like Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This... <laughs> You cannot reason with him. He does not feel pain. He does not feel any. You cannot reason with him. He is going to kill you. Like yes, it's that's exactly. I was what it is. I was like T two baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> but all right, so back to it. So yeah, you started so, feeling like crap. So I feel so, and and unfortunately the Bone Thugs went on around eleven. Of course they were trying to do. I think basically they were. I think they were trying to have each new act start on the hour. Okay. Yeah. So you know. So I think right around so eleven is when Bone you, Thug went on. Like. So did you get to hear any of the songs? I did. I heard like the first two. I think they did first of the month. First of the month was the uh, first song. I think that. I think you're right. Yeah. And then that one. And then I think I might have made it two songs in. And and I was like, and again, kind of like Jeremy was saying, I looked so bad that the wives people were starting to like, yeah, question like, are like, you all right? Like the, our buddies' wives were like coming over and like and like you know giving me a hug because I just I, you could tell that I was in pain. So I yeah, lasted. Brandon about wasn't two, feeling it. No, yeah. So unfortunately, I, I, but I lasted because about two songs. that was such a fun night. It you was, know, and it, it would have been even better had you been there for the whole thing. But yeah. I, and actually, we had plans. Remember, I was going to stay the night at your yeah, house you and all this. Uh huh. Nope, had to come back to stupid, boring Olathe. <laughs> That's all right. Next, how about we let's get into the 4th of July, it being on a Wednesday, and how much I hate that. It fucking sucks. Okay, so I have the position where I believe more holidays need to follow in the lead of Thanksgiving, okay? You can have the actual date of the holiday that it's remembered by, right? Yeah. So 4th of July can still be the 4th of July, yep. but it should not be observed until a goddamn Friday or put it on a Monday, whatever Exa you want to exactly, do. Exactly. But in the middle of the fuck, this makes me want to fucking kill myself with it a does. firework. I'll do it that way <laughs> in a public display if you want. But God damn it, do we really need 4th of July on a Wednesday? Because nothing is more depressing than knowing, ooh, I get a Wednesday off. Wow. Mm, yeah. Yank me, bitch. Uh -huh, I don't get yeah. Yeah, what, how do you plan for fucking vacations around that? So, I, you know, my uh, my family's going down to the Lake of the Ozarks. They're going to go stay at the Tantero Resort down there, and I'm going to go down Which there. Which I them. believe has been turned into a Margaritaville yes, by Jimmy Mar Buffett. Yes, a Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville. It's in the middle of the transition now. Hopefully everything isn't all shitty down there right now. And uh, But, yeah, so they're going down, but I've, I've used a lot of vacation time already this year, and I've got – we're going to Mexico here in a month. I'm going out to Virginia Beach to see another friend of mine for a couple of days. So I'm out of vacation, so I didn't have enough time to take the whole week off. So I have to fucking work Monday. I got – Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday off, which I drive down to the Ozarks, and then I've got to come back Thursday night, and I've got to fucking work Friday. So I have to work goddamn it's Monday like a reverse and Friday. Three day weekend. It is. It's just like it's a fucking pain in the ass, you it's, know. Yeah, lame. Oh, yeah. So I agree. We yeah, need to. So I don't like that. Who do we have to petition? 
Ugh, if I could talk, that would be nice. <laughs> Who do we have to petition to get 4th of July just to be the first Friday of July or whatever exactly. it needs to be? Exactly. Because, well, think about it. How much money do you suppose places like the Lake of the Ozarks are losing because it's in the middle of the week and people True, aren't people going down aren't there? just going down. I yeah. mean, a lot of people will still go, but not in the numbers that they normally would. No, I remember going down. We went down to the Ozarks on a 4th. It was a 4th of July, and it was all of us. And I think this might have been one when we stayed at the Four Seasons, but it was one where... Um, it, it, it fell on either a Saturday or a Sunday, so the Ozarks was packed. And I don't know if you guys remember this. The gas stations couldn't even keep ice in stock. It was that busy. We were going to gas yep. station. They were literally out of ice. It was mm-hmm. that fucking busy because it was like a Saturday or Sunday. So you're completely right. I guarantee Man, it would be on you, a Wednesday. I bet you there's just millions of dollars lost. Yeah. All mm-hmm. because... You know, 4th of July on a Wednesday. Nobody likes that. So let's move on to the next thing, which is <laughs> a, a tweet I saw this week, which was a, I don't know what grade they were in. They looked young, like maybe first, second grade. They, the class took a caterpillar, <laughs> raised it into a butterfly, and they were outside getting ready to release this thing into the wild. And what do you see? They release it. And less than one second later, a dog jumps into the air and bites it and eats it right in front of all the kids. Like, I mean, my God, you do all this work and then that's the uh, uh, mother nature undefeated, bitch. I was going to say, when you think about it, it's actually really a powerful lesson. You can rehab animals, but fate is fate, bitch. Right. right. And you had another one to add to yeah. this, right? So there's a, I don't know if people have seen it, but there's, I've seen this on Facebook before, but there's also, there was, it was a sea lion and, and it, it like, and one of its uh, paws or, or fins or whatever you call them was crushed. Mm-hmm. And so they took it in and they rehabbed this thing. Mm-hmm. And so they have they, they go to a beach and they make this big whole deal about like re-releasing it in the wild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they have people like speakers and all this and they release it. And a fucking <laughs> orca literally in front of the crowd just chomps Mother down Nature, on this thing. bitch. Yes. Undefeated. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's it's just, it's it's so much of a coincidence that you're like, there's some sort of message someone is trying to send someone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to me, I always believe that means... We're living in a computer simulation, and that's our little tell. Like, and whoever's like running in the it Matrix, has a sense of humor. In the Matrix, whenever you have deja vu, uh-huh. they say, oh, that's a glitch in the Matrix. Right? Yeah. Whenever crazy shit like this happens, I always think, oh, yeah, we're living in a computer simulation. <laughs> Check this out. I was reading a newspaper article, and this is 100% true. This has been a couple of years now. There was a woman that was in Kansas City, and she was here giving a talk on pedestrian safety oh, on her lunch going break. to a great place. On her lunch break from her presentation, <laughs> she ran across the street to fucking make copies at Kinko and got hit by a bus. Holy shit. Died? You, you can't fucking write this like shit. Like dead? Yes. Dead. I mean, uh, dead. not a lot of people probably live to tell about yeah, the time yeah. they got hit by uh, a bus. Yeah, but- dead. By a fu- giving a lecture on pedestrian safety, you got hit by a fucking bus on the, uh, the, the nature, lunch break. The universe is undefeated. It's maybe. insane. I was mean, she not, jaywalking or something? I don't I mean, know. It didn't really give any more details yeah, than that, you okay. know. But it's one of those things where you know they say uh, fact is stranger than fiction, mm-hmm. and it's fucking true. Yeah, no, you know? that's absolutely true. All right, so <laughs> ne- the, the last thing we're going to get to in this first segment is oh god, Travis has a dog. Okay, it's a tiny little thing. What's it called? It's a Boston Terrier. A Boston Terrier. So. We mentioned Rocco. a pug earlier, yeah. so it's not much. It's a, about the same size, or maybe a little bigger than a pug. Uh, yeah, it's he's like he's like twenty two pounds or something, small dog. So, I'm over here at producer Travis's house, preparing for the podcast today. When your other dog, which is like a hundred pounds, <laughs> he's trying to hump this thing, mm-hmm. like not the <laughs> big dog humping the little one, which you would expect. Mm-hmm. It was the little dog trying to hump the big dog. <laughs> It's <laughs> so imagine really you know yes. <laughs> a, a twenty pound dog trying to hump a hundred pound dog. So <laughs> Rocco's the smaller dog. He's the boss. I think I've terrier. seen porns like this. Before. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> we might have just found a new fetish. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Big dog, little dog. <laughs> <laughs> dot well, com coming next dot summer. Com. <laughs> <laughs> dot org. <laughs> and he so he's dot like, com. Uh, can you do that? <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> oh, where did I? Geez, where did I? So the dog. Uh, yeah, we're going okay. with the red rocket theme. <clears throat> well, we so go. Rocco just won't stop humping red Winston. Rocco. And Winston is a hundred pound American bulldog. Red Rocco. Oh my Come god. Com. <laughs> won't stop humping him. So, but you should see Travis, his face. Like Winston, hit it. Brandon, where are you going? <laughs> I gotta go 
Oh shit, my fucking brains out. So I think I think All right, we, continue. we need okay. to get some uh, we need to get some other clips. Okay. <laughs> we do have more and we can bring those to you if you'd like, folks. Oh yeah, are they all of me? Probably. <laughs> uh, if you want, play one for me or you, Travis. Let's see here. Oh nope, they're all from Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I imagine that's what's going through Rocco's head. Oh, uh, yeah. as he's okay. doing this. So Rocco, he's on there, he's like Oh boy. And then he's like humping his ear and he's like Oh boy. And then he's humping his leg and he's like Oh boy. And then he Travis tells him to stop, but he's like Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly Anyways, right. go ahead. Well, imagine a 20-pound dog humping a 100-pound dog, but the 100-pound dog, you can tell his facial expression is just like, oh, God, again, like, what the hell? Get this guy off me. But so, this I wish I had the balls. I wish I had the balls to, I mean, what's the equivalent? If I'm at SeaWorld and there's an orca whale, I wish I had the balls to just go start humping it. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, yeah. that's the equivalent, right? Because he's like... He's humping something that's like ten times his size. No fear. He uh, although yeah. um, he Winston has. So when you get a big dog, you have to train him a little bit to not be aggressive. Like right, Rocco is kind of an asshole, but if True you let the, if you let the yeah. big dog be the aggressor, then he could like hurt somebody. Yeah, but, I but mean he's totally not. He's but he's a yeah he's a, he's a great dog. He's I, a, but I've been close to the human equivalent of this. I had sex with a female MMA fighter, who I'm pretty sure could have kicked my ass, and I really pissed her off one night. <laughs> what, well, let's dive a little deeper into that. What did you do? So uh, I'm so, assuming you didn't try to armbar her, and that was the problem. <laughs> no, I met her. I met her on a dating site, and she was. Uh, she was. I mean, she was ugly jacked. as sin in was the face. Jacked? Yeah, yeah. But she. I mean, her body was immaculate, but I mean, just ugly as sin in the face. Now I imagine somebody like this probably has a clitoris that pokes out Uh uh-huh yeah yeah very yeah probably about as much testosterone as me but the sex was fucking fantastic of course you know i mean fantastic yeah she probably fucked you uh yeah yeah. she she was getting rough with you yeah the other way around yeah well yeah was there a strap on included (laughs) uh no comment so (laughs) so uh we had hooked up a couple of times and she fucking invited me over one night and uh you know it was like late and i was like 11 cock bar you like God, I imagine Marty. that's an arm bar, but like with your cock. But, <laughs> I, but I show up at her house, and she has she has a son, and it, she's got shared custody. She had just separated from the father, like maybe a single mother. Six I'm six shocked. months, years ago. Yeah, or maybe a year ago. Oh, was this when you're in like in Wichita or something? No, 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 no. This, this is, is here in town. I, yeah, it was okay. actually in Overland that's Park. That's another actually, sex story. Yeah, it's that, a di- okay. yeah, it's, right. that's a different one. And she, but she had a kid, and uh, oh yeah, that's that's actually very close to this one too. Okay. So. <laughs> She uh so anyway she she invites me over and she's like you know it's like eleven o'clock she's like come on in the front door's unlocked uh, I'm in the bathtub waiting for you and so I walk in and as I'm walking up the stairs to her 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 uh, her bathroom I walk by her son's room. And he's in there asleep, and the door is like. Now you know, I'm suddenly ha- depressed. I know it's like the door is like halfway shut, and he's Mommy, all sleeping, looking all peaceful. Who's this guy? Yeah, and I walk in, and she, and she's like drunk in the tub, and she's like, "Hey, come here." Drunk in the tub sounds very dangerous. Uh, it probably was, yeah. I mean, she, this chick was bad. Drunk crazy. in the tub, also a great punk band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I don't know what it was. I I think I was I was like super stoned or something. I think because when I walked by the kid, something about it just fucked with me and I was like I can't this I mean is not so-, so much that you couldn't get a boner but like yeah yeah I mean you know yeah but I just I felt like I, I felt like this situation was so trashy I just felt so bad about it so I went in I saw her in the tub and I just had this fucking guilt you know with her son in the next room so I'm like oh shit um, I left my phone in my car and I'm like I'll be right back and I just and that's when you went home I fucking- ate an entire large pizza <laughs> a thing of ice cream and a bunch of cheese sticks yes. so I burn out and I go home after about 10-15 minutes she realizes I'm not coming back and she's <laughs> blowing up my phone. You pussy motherfucker, get back here and fuck me. <laughs> fuck me. Yes. Uh, I mean, just out of her mind. son of a bitch. Yes. And I was like, I was kind of worried because she knew where I lived because the first time we hooked oh, up boy. was at my house. And she, yeah, so, uh, and she drove like this big, you know, those fucking like F-350 with like the, I don't know, 75 inch tires or whatever the fuck it is, you know, like just, I, okay, just, of kind, of, can I take just a, kind of intimidating. Can I take a quick second to say how much I hate people like that? Like if yes. you've got one of these jacked up trucks with the huge tires uh. Give it a rest. We all get it. You've got a micro penis, and nobody's impressed by your stupid big truck. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. All right. But I've heard a theory. So does that mean that men that drive Priuses have huge cocks? No, they're just pussies. <laughs> wouldn't, it, wouldn't, wouldn't, the, uh, wouldn't the inverse be true? <laughs> no, they're just pussies. <laughs> they're just pussies. All right. So but let's get back to the Rocco part of this. The no, he wants, Rocket, Yeah. Where you... 
I want you to lead to the. Oh, you I had to put the ice. Yeah. On. Well, so he won't stop <laughs> humping him, and that, like you know, <clears throat> what happens when a dog humps? He gets a red rocket, right? So this red my rocket. twenty pound <laughs> Boston Terrier gets this red, red rocket, rocket over. over the weekend, and it won't go away. Like it's like I, you know, I have I, I force him to stop humping my big dog. So I'm like, <laughs> he's got him in a different corner. And I'm just like looking at him and he's still got this red rock. And I'm like, oh my God, it won't go away. What the hell do I do? And like five minutes go by. He's like sitting there like what it seems like almost asleep already maybe. But his red rocket's still hanging out. You got to call so the I, Viagra 1-800 number. Now, dude, uh, I, you have now, an erection more, over four hours. You didn't let him finish on you so he would go away, <laughs> did you? <laughs> well, I, so I didn't know what to do. So, I, you know, I think what would I do if I needed to get rid of my erection? So I... Thought about putting an ice cube on his on his red it's, rocket. Oh, I thought you were going to use his little paws and give himself a hand yeah. rub. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, like asshole down. didn't let me. Fit. No, so <laughs> I put an ice cube on his red rocket and immediately gone. Really? You know, yeah. So look at you. See, we try to provide you folks yeah. with good life advice. If you indeed have a dog that will not stop having <laughs> sex with people, put an ice cube on its little red rocket. Tingle the balls a little bit if you want, <laughs> but it'll get it to go away. And if they're spayed or neutered on the sack. <laughs> and if anybody out there in podcast land wants to ever come and rub ice on my nuts, I'm totally Wasn't open. that weird? I, I, I like mean, how you said anybody, not no. women, anybody, anybody. I'm pansexual, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> so Donald Rumsfeld could come right now and rub um, ice on your balls. Yeah, but even just the thought makes me come, so I probably wouldn't even be <laughs> any good. <laughs> well, I feel like Brandon, my, uh, uh, Rocco might have a little bit of Brandon in him, because he doesn't have balls. Rocco doesn't. Brandon yeah. probably has balls. I, but, I, I'd like to think so. Okay. But he's old, <laughs> but he still won't stop pumping my dog, so I imagine that's what you're going to be. You're going to be old, and you're no matter what, how uh -huh. big the girl is, you're still going to be humping away. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. All right. So we've got a guest on the line, so we're going to move to that. Um, we are joined now by a contributing writer for Arrowhead, arrowheadaddict.com. He hosts the Chiefs Zone podcast, as well as the Cage Zone podcast. Farzin Vasugian joins us now to talk some Chiefs, some MMA. But Farzin, it's really great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining us. How are you today? I'm good. Appreciate you guys having me on. I, I was looking at you guys' podcast on iTunes, and I look. You know how in the uh, near the bottom it, it'll say, you know, listeners who listen to this podcast also listen to this podcast. Well, the, the first podcast listed on there was the Joe Rogan Experience, which is my favorite <laughs> podcast. And Not, I said, hey, I mean, I'll, I'll never be on the Rogan podcast, but this will be the closest thing hey, to it. So you just uh, never I'm know. <laughs> you just never know. I've actually met the guy. He's He's a very interesting guy. And that kind of, so we said we'd talk MMA last, but that kind of leads us into this. Brandon, you had a question, yeah. so far away. Yeah. So what do you think about this whole Joe Rogan beef with uh, Colby Covington? Um, I, I, you know, he just, it, Colby will not drop it. And I just think it's hilarious. Obviously, I think he's going for, he's going for ratings. He, you know, obviously he's going for headlines. But I, what do you, I was kind of curious your thoughts on that. Yeah. I, I know Rogan, he, he brought up that this is Covington trying to, uh, trying to garner attention because let's be honest, if he didn't make those comments in Brazil after he beat Damian Maya, I think that was back in, I want to say the end of October, yeah. he probably does not get that interim title shot against RDA, which he got at UFC 225 in Chicago. So yeah, I mean, there is, <laughs> this, this is what MMA is about. I mean, you yeah. have to speak up a little bit. In a lot of people, when, uh, whether it's Joe Rogan and someone, when they stick the microphone and say, who do you want next? You got to give a name. You got to call someone up because that uh -huh. adds to your value. <laughs> Oh, and yeah. I think Colby Covington's been trying to do that for for a while now. I know he's 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 I, I, he's been bringing up Donald Trump and make America <laughs> great oh, again God. several times. We know the the point of doing that, obviously. Uh, yeah, hot okay. yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say a year ago nobody was even talking about Colby Covington. Now everyone is, and Colby Coving Covington he's not only winning in the cage, but he's winning outside the cage. So hey, uh, he got a championship out of it, and he's now going to get the real. Undisputed title shot soon, so good for him. Nice. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's apparently doing something right, I guess, right? <laughs> All right, so since we're going to uh, work in reverse order, well, let's do get the UFC stuff out of the way. So we are all like, you know, like... You know, fringe fans like we watch the big fights whenever they come on. And Farzin, I don't know if you know, Jeremy is actually a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> that is true, but that is awesome. We don't need to well, get... where at if you don't mind me asking. <laughs> Say again. Where, where, where do you train Jiu Jitsu at? Uh, it's called uh, Shogun Martial Arts. It's uh, in oh, okay. Mission, Kansas. Um, 
awesome. the guy who runs this thing is probably one of the baddest men walking the planet. So it's always good to learn from a guy like that. Um, but, so, so he's so he can definitely bring a, a little bit of a different perspective, obviously. Right. Too, so, right? like I was saying, we That's watch awesome. we yeah. watch the big fights. You know, uh, from an outsider's opinion, it's sort of the UFC seems like in a a rough patch. Right. We've got fighters getting popped for drug tests. We've got people missing weight. We've yeah. got Conor McGregor doing his shenanigans. And it seems like all the extracurricular stuff is outweighing the fights. Do you agree yeah. with that as an outsider's opinion? And what do you think the UFC can do to kind of get this turned around? Uh, yeah, you, you make some valid points. I, I mean, certainly the uh, stuff happening outside the cage, that's getting more attention than uh, than anything. I mean, the Conor McGregor incident in uh, Brooklyn, you know, I mean, that was just bizarre. I, I, I'd never seen that before. Uh, but but listen, I, I, I think, uh, and I don't know if a lot of people know the name, but Jason High, who used to be with the UFC, he uh, he put his hands on a referee because of a decision he disagreed oh, with, not, a stoppage he disagreed with. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, either. this was this was several years ago, and unfortunately, a very similar incident happened to Jason Hyde. But but that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is Conor McGregor jumped the Bellator cage and did way worse. And obviously, the UFC's cutting a lot of sack. And listen, the the people who are higher up, they they'll get way more chances than those on the bottom. Uh, the UFC needs Conor McGregor. The UFC absolutely. Uh, I mean, they, they don't have Ronda Rousey. She seems very happy doing what she does over at the WWE. John Jones, I, I mean, he's... he's uh, Is he on a suspension? He's on a suspension, uh, but it's happening over and over again. Right. You just cannot rely on the guy because how many chances are you going to give him? And then you have Nate Diaz, who yeah. it wasn't really a superstar before the Connor uh, rivalry, but he's refusing to fight at the moment. Uh, the UFC's got to... And unfortunately, this is a great sport but the industry the business side of it is very ugly it was such an up-and-coming company they could do no wrong for so long and it's like all of a sudden that fell flat and like you were saying the biggest stars are out of it right now they they have a big star power problem i think right now and they need somebody to come step in and fill that void yeah i mean they they brought back george st pierre last year and uh, I, I think he felt really ill because of the weight cut when he moved up in weight at 185 and uh, who knows what exactly he's going to do. We keep hearing Dana say that Khabib is going to fight with Connor next, but we don't really know the details about Connor's uh, uh, legal issues at the moment. Right. So you, you can't really rely on that too much. So yeah, the UFC is kind of in a bind right now. And listen, uh, the blame is on Dana White. He keeps giving Connor all these chances and he's not really, Hey, hey look, I mean, these are all grown men. You can't control all of them, but you got to, put down the hammer and say, right. Hey, look, we, we, we punished other guys before you got to be in line because you're, you're getting yourself into trouble. And you know, what we, kind we of example to. is this to set and how can we hold other people accountable if we let the biggest star in the sport and get away with all this stuff? Yeah, for sure. And that's something, yeah, I mean, look, Connor, I mean, he's, he's a father now and, and uh, he, he and his girlfriend, you know, they're together. You got to make sure, you know, you're not getting into trouble because you don't want your kid to, be living a whole week without his dad or whatever incident could come up with that. So hopefully they get get that all situated and solved up because the UFC does need all those guys back. Absolutely. You know, I, I miss Chuck Liddell. That's that's who I miss. We need to get we need to get him back in there. I'll bring him out of retirement somehow. So I did see uh you're heading to Vegas next week for that's uh UFC two twenty six, is that right? That is correct. Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, all right. looking forward to it. What should we be looking out for? What uh anything that uh we should you know be looking out for on that fight? Oh, I mean, it's a it's a highly stacked card. Um, it, you know, if if you don't mind, I actually want to look at the uh, what's happening the previous night, which is the ultimate fighter finale. There is one fighter on there, uh, Julian Mar- Marquez. His nickname is the Cuban Missile. He spends time between Kansas City and Las <laughs> Vegas, uh, so so he'll be fighting on there. So personally, oh. as, as as a Casey guy, I know a lot of you guys are Casey guys as well. Yeah, uh, that's definitely something to look forward to. He's been oh, nice. tabbed as a rising star, so. Julian Marquez is definitely a guy to look forward to on the Ultimate Fighter finale. But as far as U- UFC 226 goes, two title fights. Uh, Stipe Miocic, the heavyweight champion, will defend his belt against the light heavyweight champion Daniel Cormier. And Cormier has got a kind of an interesting background. He's undefeated at heavyweight at three and zero, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, his only two losses were to John Jones. One of them overturned, of course, because of the anabolic steroid. Uh, so, so that's going to be an interesting one right there. Stipe Miocic. Uh, crazy enough, he has the record for most title defenses in heavyweight history in the UFC, which is wow. three, when then not a big margin. <laughs> yeah. uh, in the co-made event, uh, this one is, is the one I'm looking forward to the most, uh, Max Holloway, 
who uh, was uh, going to try to fight uh, Khabib uh, a couple of months ago, uh, but the commission held him off, couldn't make weight. He's defending his featherweight belt against Brian Ortega. And, and Brian Ortega, he's an undefeated guy uh, uh, through 11 fights, one of them overturned because of uh, banned substance he had. But Brian Ortega is a very talented guy. What's so crazy about Brian is um, he trains with the Gracie uh, Jiu-Jitsu family, Henner and Hiron Gracie over at Torrance, California. So, I mean, this guy's talented. The crazy thing is, in just about every single fight, Brian Ortega takes way more shots to the head than his opponents do. But somehow, Brian always finishes his fights. And I think that this is going to be the X factor here. How strong will Brian Ortega's chin be when he faces a guy like Max Holloway? Who, who is a heavy hitter? Uh, he knocked out Jose Aldo twice, uh, taking the title from Jose Aldo once and also defending it. So uh, this is going to be Brian Ortega's biggest test in uh, trying to make sure that he can uh, stay well-rounded and focus for five rounds if need be and try to uh, limit Max Holloway in the amount of strikes that he throws because Brian, everyone knows Brian Ortega is going to go for some sort of submission in this fight. And if he can do that, Max Holloway is going to be a lot of trouble. And I'm actually pulling for Ortega. I think he's going to be able to pull off the upset and uh, and uh, snatch that belt for uh, for the first time in his life. Very good. Well, all right. So let's take it back for just a moment and talk a little bit about more about you for just a second. Um, I saw you had posted a picture on Twitter of you when you first came to the United States at two years old, your very first family home. Uh, if you could just for a moment, where did you call home before Kansas City, and then? As a you know, lifelong Kansas Cityan, of all places, how did Kansas City and, and be the spot that you ended up? Uh, you know, the, the Kansas City question is funny. I'll get to that in a moment. But um, originally, I was born in Iran. Uh, I uh, at the age of one or before I turned one, I think my parents. Uh, but I mean, before I was born, uh, they they've always wanted to uh, to move to the United States. They kind of knew the direction where that country was going in. And, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate seeing, you know, where it is now and all the political activity that, that we see now. But I, I know we don't want to get into that. So yeah. we lived in Turkey for uh, for a little bit. And from Turkey, we came to the United States. As far as the Kansas City connection, I don't know exactly why Kansas City <laughs> was the spot. Uh, I will say, uh, funny enough, uh, I, I think my dad knew of someone who was in Kansas City and uh, – uh, this guy who owned a nightclub gave my dad a job. My dad was working a couple of other jobs just so, you know, we can get through and uh, have some money. But his boss's name was Farzine, which is the only other time we've ever come across <laughs> someone wow. with the same name <laughs> as me. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but I've got to tell you a funny story because um, it, it is, of course, uh, 4th of July week. Uh, and when we moved at the end of June, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in our home. And again, I'm a kid. I don't remember this. This is the story that my family, right. uh, my parents relate to me. Mm. But uh, my, my parents hear a lot of explosions outside, and they don't know exactly what's going on. And they think there's there's We're just celebrating going independence. On, yeah. a, a zombie apocalypse. I mean, they don't know exactly what's happening. So my dad, and I assume there's some you know limited English uh, uh, dialogue here, he right. asks someone – you know what's going on he goes oh it's the fourth of july these are fireworks and you know i mean we're we i'm sure they didn't have any idea what it was but uh it kind of a scary start to our journey in the united states but no uh we live just north of uh kansas city uh very close to the um very close to where the uh, city market is um uh not 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 necessarily the greatest area uh of course it has its troubles but uh we definitely yeah. come a long way so it's uh absolutely it's very cool to see uh, that was the start of me uh being in Kansas City in the United States, and uh, I've been here since then. Awesome. So that kind of leads me to my next question. I saw another tweet that you posted that I think the tweet was something like, uh, 16 years ago today, I got my U.S. citizenship. If For just a second, if you can take us back to that day, what is what do you remember about that day, and what does that day mean to you? Uh, as far as what it means to me, I mean, I, mean, I, I consider this place home. Uh, I wasn't born here. Uh, I, I can't claim I was, I was I was born in the United States or in Kansas City, but I always consider it home. Um, you know, I, I'd love to see where I where I was born, where I, where my family's all been from. But you know, it, it's realistically, it's not a, a, an easy thing to go back there. So if I don't ever get to see it, hey, uh, not a big problem. But um, I, I'm definitely proud to be an American for sure. And I think anyone can uh, live the dream and. Uh, and come here and succeed uh, for sure. Anyone can do that. As far as the day goes, you know, the process to become a citizen, uh, I'm sure it has changed over the years uh, because this was, I believe, in 2002 or 2003. Uh, for those who were under 18 years old, it's a very simple process. You, you simply have to go in there and, and be sworn in and, 
they name you an American citizen. Uh, if you're above the age of 18, I think you have to take some sort of uh, some sort of a historic test. quiz and on, I, yeah, I yeah, had heard on, that and on, I, uh, American history. And I would so bet you most Americans, I would bet Amer most American citizens could not pass, by yeah. the way. <laughs> I, I've heard, I've, I mean, I've, I've actually heard, I've heard it's intense. I mean, it is, it, it, is, it the, is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. My wife, she's from Mexico city. So this is always interesting to me because we're kind of trying to go through this process as well. So yeah, I, I just love the background story, so it's it's great. So, so Farzine, you know, so since you're you know Kansas City native, do, are there any other sports teams that you kind of you know kind of root for, even though you know the, the Chiefs, I'm sure have a place in your heart. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. I'm a big Chiefs fan. Yeah, of course, root for the Royals. I'm a Jayhawk as well. Uh, outside of the area, um, yeah, I love the city of Las Vegas. Of course, we talked about it. Yeah, I'll be going there. I, I usually get to go there a couple of times a year for for vacation and for work. Uh, but I, become, I I adopted the Vegas Golden Knights. I honestly was not oh. a big hockey fan before all this. Uh, it's yeah. a shame the Raiders are going there because. I, I, but at the same time, I actually like it because I, I'm so uh, whatever the Chiefs. Yes, I'm I, so I excited to say, do the road trip for that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so uh, definitely uh, got yeah. hooked on hockey this year I, because of the uh, Golden Knights. Yeah, two quick points. I've never been to a sports book yet, and I'm so excited to go there. I what, The perfect scenario to me is the Chiefs play on Monday night, so that frees up Sunday to stay in the sports book and have a real good time doing that. Um, and the second thing, I did follow your Golden Knights thing, thing online or on Twitter, and it actually really got me interested in it. Like I never really cared before, but seeing how excited you got over it, like it made it, it made it really interesting. <laughs> Yeah, 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 like I said, I was never a big hockey fan before this. Um, the Golden Knights. A lot of a lot of people have their opinions on how uh, the expansion draft really helped them more than it should have. I mean, look, I, I can't really comment too much on that. Uh, I'm not big into hockey like I am with the NFL or MMA, uh, but they really were a lot of fun to watch. I still remember when I was in Vegas, I was asking some of the locals there what they think about the uh, the team, and they said we're proud of them. They're first place in the division right now, and. Uh, they, they finished with one of the best records in the league, if I'm not mistaken, the best record in, in the NHL. And uh, yeah, I mean, their playoff games were a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury, the, the, the goalie for the Golden Knights, uh, he, he really had a hell of a season. And uh, you, you look at the head coach for them, uh, Gerard Glenn, who was fired a couple of years ago, and look at the position he's in now. So it was a really great story, probably one of the best stories in sports. Probably could have been for sure the best had they won the uh, Stanley Cup a couple of Absolutely, weeks ago. Absolutely, especially yeah. with what Vegas had gone through, you know, previously. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's get into some Chiefs talk. This is where I I'm really excited to talk to you about. So the buzz around town about Patrick Mahomes obviously the Chiefs have not drafted a quarterback in the first round since like 1983 <laughs> um, so the <laughs> excitement level is at an all-time fever pitch he, the national buzz isn't doing anything to tamper that down what are your expectations and Patrick Mahomes will have had a successful year if what happens I think Patrick Mahomes will have a successful year if he just makes good decisions. And I think that's something he surely has had to learn from Alex Smith, because even though Alex Smith, he got criticized for, you know, not throwing deep as whole lot, a whole lot in his career, especially his time here in Kansas city. Uh, Alex Smith made a lot of great decisions, probably one of the best quarterbacks, maybe the best uh, during his yep. time uh, when it comes to decision-making. And that's a, that's an important factor in the NFL. And I think that's something Patrick Mahomes needs to do. I had um, a former NFL scout. He he was a scout uh, for uh, for KU, and he's been a scout for a couple of teams, including the Chiefs during uh, Dick Vermeil's time, as well as with the Eagles. Uh, his name is Don Shanka, uh, who runs OurLads.com, which is a scouting service. And I asked him, "Is th is this offense the best any quarterback has been uh, inserted into?" And he said, "Probably the most talented group he, uh, a quarterback uh, has been given since Aaron Rodgers when he replaced Brett Favre." Uh, you just look at who you have all around and look, I'm not going to say Kareem hunt individually, because honestly, any running back under Andy Reid is going to excel. Absolutely. Then you've got Travis Kelsey who uh, hands down, he's probably the best tight end in the NFL right behind Gronkowski and people want to make a back and forth there. Well, they're up there. Uh, he, he the point is Pat Mahomes has a legitimate tight end. There. Right. Then you've got uh, Chris Conley, Tyree kill. And I saw pro football focus say that those are the two best wide receivers from last season when it comes to, uh, press coverage and, and and you have that to work with. You've got a lot of and Sammy on Watkins team too. Like yeah, yeah. Sammy, we're oh, so I'm loaded sorry. that we we might before. even forget Sammy Watkins. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> oh, I think I, I, I think I meant I meant Sammy Watkins. I think I said Chris Conley. Is that what I said? Yeah, but that's okay. No, I'm right there with you though. So yeah, yeah. I mean, those I, I meant Watkins and Hill. Uh, you got a lot of talented players on this offense here. Uh, the offensive line, uh, a question mark. I mean, Eric Fisher, especially with where he was drafted, and maybe not really playing up to his expectations. But I think overall, this offensive line very underrated and underappreciated too. Uh, because look, Kareem Hunt doesn't lead the lead in rushing with a bad offensive line. That doesn't happen. Right. Um, so, so I think this offensive line is going to be the only concern for me. That, and uh, that was it, it, absolutely what I wanted to ask you next. This, yeah. as you said, the the offense is stacked everywhere. The only question mark we really have is the offensive line. So, I read your piece on Eric Fisher. It's like sort of a make or break year for him. Do you think he's up for the challenge? Man, here's the thing. Eric Fisher, uh, the the best Eric Fisher looked was in his second season in 2014 when he was going up against some top-notch uh, pass rushers at the time, Olivier Vernon, uh, DeMarcus Ware, uh, and Von Miller. I mean, Von he, Miller. He, I mean, yeah. he owned Von Miller that game. Yeah, yeah. And if you remember the playoff game a couple of years ago in, in Houston, he, he did a great job against J.J. Watt as well. Oh, there absolutely. have been times where Eric Fisher has looked like a Pro Bowl offensive tackle, but he's never been able to look like that in a full season. So that's the concern with him. Uh, I think that's where, that's where the big question mark is. Uh, if you remember Larry Johnson, he, he really loved attacking the outside and he had some of those big guys like a, like a Willie Rowe for yep. uh, or Brandon Albert on the outside, but the chiefs don't necessarily have that, at least on the left side, Mitchell Schwartz, a reliable run blocker, but uh, you, you want to have those two reliable tackles because pass rushers seem to be a stronger breed more and more each year. And, and you want to be able to protect your quarterback, especially early on for the chief schedule. They're facing a lot of really good pass rushing duos and uh, Pat Mahomes could be in trouble early and he needs that offensive line way more than those skill position players uh, just to get through those first couple of weeks. Absolutely. And I think those offensive weapons at least will have defenses a little on their heels so they can't go full attack mode because if they do, I think he'll, he'll drop one on Tyreek over, <laughs> over the middle and it's touchdown. So yeah, um, the draft class, I haven't been able to do much homework on it just yet. Anybody stand out? Anybody we should keep an eye on with training camp coming up just a few weeks away? Yeah, you know, a lot of people would probably give the answer of Braylon Speaks simply because he was a, the, the first pick for the Chiefs, even though it was a second round pick. I've got to say, I, I think if there's one player who could surprise, I've got to go with Armani Watts. He was a fourth round uh, pick um, at safety. But if you look at Kansas City's safety position, it is completely wide open. You've got Eric Berry coming back. Okay, we all know he's he's going to be the starter on, on one of those safety positions. He's played both the strong safety and free safety position. But who do you have next to him? You let go of Rod Parker, who was, I'll say, kind of underrated, although last year was a step back year for I him. and he was getting paid. that. Yep. He, he was getting paid a little more than he should have. Uh, but uh, who do you put? I mean, Daniel Sorensen, he played a lot of games in Eric Berry's absence. Leon McQuaid the third. He hasn't played a whole lot. In the regular season, they brought in Robert Golden, uh, a veteran who's seen more time on defense with the Steelers lately. And there's no reliable number one guy beside Eric Berry there. And I think Armani Watts might have an opportunity to kind of crack that open window and p- potentially start a few games. Maybe not in week one, but maybe at some point midway through the year, if there are some struggles at that safety position. I think another guy to keep an eye on is uh, Dorian O'Daniel, because let's not forget the Chiefs. Their two starting linebackers last year, Rameek Wilson and Derek Johnson, are gone. And right. you've got you got Anthony Hitchens and Reggie Ragland. Those are going to be your projected starters. But uh, you know, if injuries uh, take place, or if Hitchens has a disappointing season, or or Ragland uh, doesn't live up to expectations, maybe Dorian O'Daniel uh, gets to play a little bit more uh, than expected in his rookie season. So I'd say those are the two guys that I, I'm keeping my eye on the most. I, yep, I completely agree with that assessment. Um, speaking of Eric Berry. He's obviously shown he can battle his way back. He's battled from cancer. He's battled from a knee injury. Yeah. Have you heard, seen anything about him? How's he doing? Is he looking like the old Eric Berry? Yeah, you know, that's really hard to answer because me personally, I'm not too big on OTAs and, and, and training camp because, you know, a big part of that, you're not supposed to – don't get me wrong. Of course, you've got to give 100% effort, but you don't necessarily play at full speed right. because you don't want to injure you. Your, your teammates. So uh, I know uh, Sammy Watkins had this incredible one-handed catch <laughs> yes. that he made and, and, and everyone went crazy. 
which is great. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it's not a live game. No one's going to light him up and force him to drop it uh, because that's their own teammates there. Uh, yeah, I think- uh, from what I from what I do know, Eric Berry is uh, moving as quick as he was before. And listen, uh, you look at what was it? I think in 2011, he uh, had that torn ACL uh, on the, in the very first quarter of the season, and he came back strong the following year. Uh, you look at 2014, you mentioned uh, he came back from cancer, also had a couple of injuries that season before he had to step away from football completely. And he came back strong the following year, 2016, an incredible year. And, of course, everyone remembers the uh, game against the Panthers and the Falcons where he – Single-handedly had, won the game, basically. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, just just, just uh, impossible outcomes that he was able to, to put together. Uh, you, you really don't see guys like this at the safety position much. Uh, very rarely. I think the only other safety that you can compare him to is Earl Thomas, who, oddly enough, was in the same draft class as right. him. Uh, other than that, you don't see he, a lot of these He reminds of me players. an awful lot of Ed Reed. And if that's your yeah. comparison, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> oh, for sure. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Chiefs definitely need him back, especially with their turnover woes. Because uh, if, if we all know the offense. If Mahomes can make smart decisions, they'll be great defensively. If the passers can be there and if the secondary, which I, I'm excited to see what they do with Fuller and Emerson and Barry coming back, yep. I, I think they can collect a lot of interceptions this year. Absolutely, yeah. And with Eric Barry, the only real known commodity on this, man, this defense <laughs> is a whole new look defense. It's There's not a lot uh, of returning players. No, not at all. So, all right, one last little question, and then we can get you out of here. Uh on Twitter, somebody had proposed uh, – it was Arrowhead Pride, I believe – proposed the hypothetical, if the Giants called and offered OBJ straight up for Tyree Kill, would you take it? Now, the poll results on this thing were about 65% of people said no. Um, and then people were just crushing Chiefs fans for being homers. First off, what would your answer be to that? I mean, look, if you if you uh, have Arrowhead pride, ask that question. Uh, of course, all of the readers are going to are going to say keep Tyreek Hill uh, because those are Chiefs fans reading it. If you ask the same question for Giants fans, they're all going to vote for Odell right. Beckham Jr. So, so that you got to keep that in mind. I will say this. Uh, I, I think there is some interesting upside with Tyree kill. Uh, we learned a lot about him last year. I actually doubted him uh, as a number one receiver last year. And then look what he did. He's already uh, being labeled as one of the best wide receivers in the NFL right now, not his original position, but he's done a great job of that. Uh, but look, you got to look at Odell Beckham jr. And he's played for a Giants team that hasn't done well the past couple of years. And he's still putting up huge numbers. It's pretty close. If I had to say right now, if, if I had to pick one of those two guys, I, I know Chiefs fans won't like to hear this, but I've got to go with <laughs> Odell Beckham jr. Uh, I mean, he's had close to a hundred catches just about every season uh, with the exception of this past year. I know he, he suffered that injury. Maybe that's a big reason why you want to stay away from him. But outside of injury, uh, he has 90 plus catches. He has more than 1300 yards and double digit touchdowns. That's very hard to, to pass up on. Whereas with Tyreek Hill, uh, the speed is there. Uh, I think he can put up uh, numbers, maybe not close to Odell Beckham Jr.'s, but but somewhere in that range still to be as uh, a top 10 receiver. So I don't think you can go wrong either way. I, I think the other benefit you, you get in Tyreek Hill is his uh, abilities as a special teams player. If the Chiefs decide to uh, continue to use him as a punt returner from time to time. So that could be another value that, that's added in there, whereas Odell Beckham Jr. doesn't do a whole lot of that. So that's another thing to consider. But if I had to pick one right now, who I think can can I can win more with? I'd have to go with Odell Beckham Jr. I think that's the right answer. I I think he's the more talented of the two. Uh, I think Tyreek can catch him with if he keeps progressing the way he has been. Um, if you take in the money and everything else, I would take Tyreek simply because of the money factor on the field. He seems to be. No headaches whatsoever. OBJ's sort of one of these prima donna type guys, so you got a little <laughs> bit of headaches. Um, but I think you're right. There is no wrong answer in that one. I, they're both incredibly talented. So, All right. Well, I want to just take a moment to thank you again for coming on. It's It's been a real pleasure to talk to you today. Um, anything you want to shoot out there, as I said, you can find him on arrowheadaddict.com. You can uh, listen to his Chief Zone, his Cage Zone podcast. Anything I'm missing? Anything you want to throw out there? No, no, uh, that's really it. Uh, definitely appreciate you guys having me on. And uh, hey, I'd be happy to do this again. Feel free to reach out to me, and uh, we'll make it happen. Absolutely, come uh, Chiefs, Chief season. We'll definitely love to have you back on. So again, thanks, my man. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Take care, guys. All right, All right. See you. you too. Thank you, Farzine. All right.
So we would like to thank uh, Farzine for coming on. That was a great conversation. Uh, really seems like a cool guy that I would I would actually like to have a beer with. If, uh, if he we drinks, we you know. definitely need to set that up. Yeah, yeah. He seems like a really cool guy and obviously very knowledgeable about the NFL and uh, and, and UFC and MMA in general. Right. So uh, thank you for uh, joining us. We're, we're back here. Uh, it was a good interview. It was a little, I don't know. I think we got some good information. Touched on, on a little bit of a lot of things. <laughs> yes, a lot of things, a lot of things. So now next what we have for you, we're going <laughs> to... Tell another little stupid, debaucherous story of me, which doesn't paint me in the best light, but I, I'm willing to put myself out there. So, Brandon, <clears throat> what exactly yesterday, happened yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> yesterday, and I'd love to know some of these details as well, even though it was my life. That, <laughs> um, How did this happen? Did I call you? Did I text you? Exactly how did all this happen? So a little background for the listeners. Friday night, uh, me, Travis, and Jeremy, we all met up and uh, uh, for a brainstorming session. And uh, We're here to give you good content, we're but sometimes that means we have to get drunk together. Sometimes that means we have to get drunk and <laughs> now, just Travis, spit if you out would, stupid number ideas. Number two. <laughs> yeah, I masturbate to the Golden Girls DVD sitting there. <laughs> so <right>. go ahead. <laughs> brilliance like that doesn't come without drinking, typically. <laughs> yeah. So Friday night we had a brainstorming session and, and kind of like a content planning session, and we decided to just tie one on. I mean, why not? It's a Friday night. Nobody had anything else going on. So, uh, yeah. True story. <laughs> it's it's a very true story. So anyways, we, uh, we were all drinking Friday night. We all got wasted. I live downtown, and we... Uh, Studio B three is located out in uh, Southern Johnson County, so practically it's, Oklahoma. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, uh, it's Mexico, <laughs> damn near. And so, uh, so, anyways, we, we don't we don't live close to, together. So, anyways, I was drinking, so we decided to do the right thing, and I Ubered home, left my car here Friday night up until well, Saturday let's, morning. Well, let's 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 take it back for just a second. You Ubered home after some arm twisting from me and Travis, <laughs> right? Like because you were dead set on driving and. I I never want uh, you driving home and getting a DUI related to this podcast and you going sour on it because well what <laughs> it really is it's you being selfish you don't want to get a call from Glenda oh I get, how could yeah, you let him do that why would you Just let like him do that Maryland because I was telling you guys I got to take it easy and I think I remember at one point you guys were like we'll oh, pay for oh, your Uber if you just stay and get drunk we with us. definitely <laughs> start egging you on but you already had that glazed over <laughs> look at that point well yet again true yes or no Travis true he definitely had that glazed Oh, so yeah. for 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 the listeners, in my defense, I do intermittent fasting, where it, some people call it time window eating. So I don't typically eat. I lunch. drink a lot too, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't eat lunch, so I typically eat. I've got a four hour eating window, and that starts around seven at, in the evening, and then ends somewhere around now, nine or ten. Can I ask depending. you a question about that eating window? Yes. Does that include pussy? Like, or can you eat <laughs> pussy outside of that window? Oh shit! I haven't really looked up at the calories. <laughs> Does well, that, uh, I guess it's right. negligible. I guess it's negligible after you uh, factor in the f- calories you burn. Then you burn. Oh, yeah, it's know. sort of like <laughs> it's sort of like lettuce, right? It's negative calories when you eat pussy. <laughs> It's true. It's very true. It's, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but go and ahead. De- I'm sorry. Depending on how the pussy tastes, it might be a negative experience in general. <laughs> true. I mean, that might send you back to the uh, restroom, like the Bone concert. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Have you ever gone down on a girl and there's like they had a little piece of like toilet paper wadded up? Oh, boy. <laughs> that sucks. Because, okay, they, gotta, no, they wipe with toilet paper. It happens, right? You yeah. know, it happens. But it's a turnoff. And I've, I've encountered that more than once. And it's I mean, not, why, is it like, never, gotta, why is it never something fun like a ten dollar bill? Like, yeah, <laughs> or a cupcake or something. <laughs> a piece of pizza. No, a piece of know. pizza. Yeah, a Bed Bath and Beyond coupon. <laughs> oh, boy. But anyways, it's never. All right. So yeah. Um. So anyway. So. I left my car Friday night, I uh, Ubered home, and then Saturday, I had to come out and pick my car up. Um, I felt like dog shit Saturday mm-hmm. morning because I was sh- wasted Friday night. Um, oh, yeah, I was, I was totally shit-faced. So we went out. I got my car back on Saturday, called Jeremy, and uh, he's like, hey, I'm already out drinking. I'm ac- actually at a Mexican restaurant there in, uh, in, o- in Olathe. That's a lie. I've never been to a Mexican restaurant in my life. <laughs> oh, wait. No, I r- live in them. <laughs> So I Uber out here uh, from downtown, and I pick up my car. And Jeremy's like, "Yeah, I'm over at this. Uh, I'm over at this Mexican restaurant on the other side um, of town." So I told him I'd pick him up. So I go over there and I pick him up. Uh, he has been 
drinking at this point, I don't know, maybe four hours. I'd love, I'd this love is it like, if I, I'd love it if I could give you a d- concrete answer. <laughs> I mean, it was. T- I think I got there at about two in the so, afternoon, and you, I think you've been drinking about four hours. Okay, so yeah. my, so you said two. I think it was about two. Okay, or so, no, three. Well, you called me three. about eight thirty. Full disclosure here, yeah. my Faja, he works <laughs> nights. All right. And so he usually gets off work and swings through Olathe roughly 8, 9 o'clock. I had him pick me up. I went over and drank with him for a little while. So it started probably 9 a.m. <laughs> yep. About 9 a.m. And I could tell. And so I, I, so get I was the, maybe like, I don't know, 77 beers in by the time you, <laughs> I met up well, with you. And when I showed up at the restaurant, you had a full beer in front of you, one empty and one empty shot glass. So <laughs> I knew, I knew there, I knew, I knew, you'd, you know, it was pretty, but it was funny because I, I show up and, uh, and I'm like, well, and you're wearing a tank top. That half of I the, forgot about that, and it was it had cheese dip stains on it, and <laughs> but we're not really certainly sure if it was from that restaurant. This could have been from a previous time I wore it. It could have been, and it, also the tank top, like one of the I guess the parts that go over your shoulder, it was like frayed to where it was like cut halfway through. <laughs> so it was not just a tank top, but it was actually like yeah. So like in fact, a mine, tank top that should be thrown why, away. Why I don't know, but all of mine seem to do that. If so, I take off my. Kansas City Royals shirt right now, I would be willing to bet you fifty dollars that this one has it too. That tank top has it too. <laughs> or well, so it's not or even that a, might mean I just haven't changed since. This yesterday. isn't like a bro tank like what Brandon wears. This is yes. like a wife, wife beater. beater. Literally yeah. like a Hanes, yeah. like you know, dollar ninety nine. Bro tank yeah. acceptable to go into a bar. Wife yeah. beaters, eh. So we <laughs> so uh so I picked Jeremy up. It's funny. I get there, and uh, he's sitting at the bar at this Mexican restaurant, and I'm like, well, you've been drinking for a while. And he looks, and there, there's the server that's, I guess, been serving him, and, and he's standing there. And Jeremy's like, no. I I've, thought they are supposed to cut us off at a, <laughs> a certain amount. A certain amount, <laughs> legally apparently not. And Jeremy looks at this guy. He's like, no, I've been good, right? And it's so funny because this, this Mexican server like looks at us and like gives me this look in the eyes like, what do you want me to say, bro? <laughs> like, <laughs> you're clearly wasted, but like you didn't try and punch me, so right. I guess that's good. <laughs> I usually don't try to punch people. Yeah. Uh, my go-to move in a Mexican restaurant when you know I'm wasted is talking Spanish to the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which you weren't doing there, so I don't know. Yo quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> so I pick you up from there. So I, I had you had a full beer, so I sat down and I had a Dos Equis lager because I knew you had to finish her, so I went ahead and had a beer with you. And uh, and then we bounce and we go to, to Austin's. Apparently this is completely out of your recollection. And we get up there and... Uh, you're shit hammered. I mean, I go to the, we get there, we order a beer. I go to the bathroom. I come back. You've ordered a shot of Jägermeister's for us, which is fine. I can't complain about that. I like Jägermeister. I feel like that happens every time. Every well, every, every time. time somebody goes to the bathroom, an angel gets its wings. No, I mean, everyone gets a shot. Yes. <laughs> when you go to the bathroom, Jeremy gets shots. And that's cool. I take that one, and then I drink another beer. I have a tiny bladder. For the listeners that don't know, you will learn this about me. Mm-hmm. I have to pee about every five minutes. I must have the bladder of a hamster. Mm-hmm. So I had to pee not not long after that, and come back. Jeremy has ordered yet another shot of Jägermeister. And then he goes downhill fast. He starts doing the passing out, standing up thing, <laughs> and then he goes over to another table, the table that is... Like, we're sitting at a table. There's a table next to us that's completely empty. He goes over to that table and posts up and, like, is about to fall asleep. And I'm looking at him. Every time his eyes get to where they're almost fully closed, uh, closed, I'm like, Jeremy, wake up. (laughs) And and he'd be like, ooh. And then he, like, tripped over the chairs. And I think he thought that I was mad at him. So he's like, I'm going to go outside. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. So he goes out. For those familiar with Austin's, it's it's a little bar. It's like our Cheers. It's kind of a local bar. But they've got a a couple of... uh, uh, benches set up out, out front like outside so jeremy sat in one of these benches and just passed out <laughs> so and i left him out there for like 20 minutes because i had just ordered a beer and he had ordered a beer that he took like one drink of and so i'm like i'm drinking oh, my Jesus. beer and i'm now gonna drink I'm, his beer now i'm the underrated a-hole uh-huh that leaves <laughs> yes the beer. so he's out he's passed out in the front and what's funny is from my table i can see literally out the front window and there are people it's this is like three o'clock in the afternoon maybe four people are coming in for like you know late I lunch ho- early dinner i certainly hope there was <laughs> children involved like and families bringing in their yeah. kids to where they're like 
Well, Johnny, that's what you yeah. don't want to end up. Uh-huh. Like. Yeah, like you ever go at to least like I can, at least I can be a service to people. For Christ. <laughs> you go to a restaurant sometimes. They have like a very interesting statue outside. Like that was you. Like, like you were the focal. Remember point. the Andy Griffin show where they had the town drunk that was always locked up in the jail cell. <laughs> I did, that's yep. me. Yes, yes, I do remember that. So you were passed out, and I just left you, and it was funny. I was looking out, and everybody would walk in, and they would just look at you like. Okay, <laughs> I guess it's that kind of four o'clock oh, on Saturday. Right it wasn't even man. four; it was like two or something. Because you called me yeah. afterwards and was, was that, like, "I got to talk to somebody about this." Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't actually talk to you. Left a voicemail that I didn't I hear until later on that night. But I thought that was like not a huge difference. But I thought that was like around two o'clock. But two o'clock is not. You don't expect on a Sunday afternoon, or was it was it Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, Saturday afternoon to that makes uh, two it o'clock. A little more forgivable. To see no, a guy no, passed out on a bench <laughs> in front of a bar and a wife beater that's stained and ripped. It's just I not something you. I oh, apologize, no. Olathe. <laughs> Sorry. And there was like you know, and then and you were like, there was a guy there that was in like an affliction shirt, and you were like. I think I should punch him. <laughs> Did I really say yeah. that? Like, and he, he looked and like know, a douche. He looked like a douche. But you know me. I'm totally not that way. Like, yeah. when I get oh, drunk, yeah. I'm like the I want to love on everybody yeah. type of yeah. guy. I'm not the But this drunk guy douche. definitely had that like that look like he was trying to. So he must hard. have really had it. Oh, Otherwise, he, I wouldn't have. He was wearing like, like jeans and cowboy boots, and it was, I don't know, 117 right, now degrees I'm, now outside. I'm back in on to punch uh, him. Yeah, it was like 117 <laughs> degrees outside. And he's dressed like he's going to a nightclub back in, I don't know, like 2007. All right, big and rich. Yeah. Save a horse, ride a douche. Bag. <laughs> Pretty sure he had those jeans that has like the really elaborate like stitching on the fucking rear pockets, oh, yeah. like you know. So, uh, so anyways, he probably needed to be punched, but it was yeah. And then um, you so go out, from, pass out. So from Austin's, I pass out on the bench. So I come out and I I, I managed to wake you up. It took it took some uh, it took a while, and I wake you did up you and you slap go slap me around or what happened? <laughs> I kind of did because there is a code word to get me out. <laughs> Of that stupor. Travis, do you know it? Chipotle? Yep. Chipotle. Yanmi. I forgot. So my Mexican wife always says this, Yanmi, Chipotle. (laughs) And brother-in-law Abe, you're going to get a kick out of this one when you hear it. (laughs) Yanmi, Chipotle. (laughs) (laughs) And I just come too. <laughs> and I had, I had forgotten about that. So yeah, it took some wrangling to get you up and wrangling. it was funny. Wrangling. <laughs> I got oh, that's you. That's a good word that's not used enough anymore. It's not. Very rarely do you have the uh, occasion to use that like gargantuan. <laughs> I like that one too. Let's just start listing different weird words that are awesome. But I wake you up and just randomly you wake up, you give me your highs your eyes are like about half mad. I think you had it right. You were about to say your high is a kite. Your high that's what you looked like. And you were you look up at me and you're like that's why I gave you the gift. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking? The gift of gab. <laughs> That's why I gave you the gift As of if gab. I'm like Zeus, the giver <laughs> yeah, of gift yes. of gab. <laughs> and so I just go, yeah, I just do whatever I can to get you to the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, whatever. Yeah, now, car. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know. And that was pretty much it. I took you home. I didn't tuck you in. I brought you inside. You sat down on the couch, immediately fell asleep. I talked to your mom for a little bit. That is a true story. Yeah, Jasmine and Florida had gone to church. I was going to talk to Jasmine. Church. Yeah. So the person that should have been at church is me, but uh-huh. they're at church. <laughs> uh, I woke up for a little bit more of this story. I woke up at midnight, like totally like, what the fuck? <laughs> Go down, open my fridge, nothing, zero, zip, zilch. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck me. Because now I'm wide awake, and all I want to do is drink myself back to sleep, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I text- and, you, and you can't drive to a liquor store. You've been right, drinking. because it's closed yep. also. like Oh, well, yeah, shit, at midnight in Kansas, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I call my cousin, who's in town, at my dad's house. Yeah. And I was like, bring me over like six or eight beers. He did. <laughs> really? So I stayed up until At like midnight? Uh huh. <laughs> I stayed up till roughly five AM. Did he I, hang out with you or did he? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, we hung out. We like played music back and yeah. forth, like talked. Yeah. So it was fun, but like <laughs> at like five or so I was like I've got this goddamn podcast to do. At 5 a.m.? Yes. Oh, At shit. At noon, oh, I need to go the were, fuck to you, bed. Since you had slept all day, right. you were like not even but tired. I, like, yeah. I need to get the fuck to bed because we actually have an interview this time. Like, I can't blow this off. Yeah. And yeah. so, like, like you had said, this podcast is changing us. Like, uh-huh. it's making us better, even if... By better, I mean I'm still a debaucherous son of a bitch, but, but at least I have limits now. 
we have something not to get wasted. <laughs> we like to, to, to hold off on getting wasted until at least after the podcast. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Dude, I feel a responsibility now. And hey, at least we we come together, we do this, we have fun. Yes. All right, and that's all we have for this week, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. If you haven't done so, please uh, follow us on uh, iTunes, rate and leave a review. It will help us out tremendously. You can follow us on Twitter at Pinky and Brain Show. That's Pinky, the letter N, Brain Show. And as always, you can find us at PinkyandTheBrainShow.com for everything else. It's been real. It's been fun, but it hasn't been real fun. <laughs> Love you guys. for listening to the Pinky and the Brain Show. For more info, check out pinkyandthebrainshow.com.